Another challenging gospel this week, praise God, because these parables are helping us realize what is important in our life and what is not. So today let's take a deep dive into this parable and see what it all says, kind of more of an extra Jesus on it this week. First off, we know that Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. There is a rich man, and oh my, how he was rich. How do we know this? Because he dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. Purple garments would have been the most expensive ones out there because the dye was the most expensive. And so the wealthy would be wearing these to show off, look how wealthy I am. So we have that, we have the fine linen. Then that he dined sumptuously each day. Not just every once in a while, not just like when there's a big feast, but every day he was dining sumptuously. He was living this life of luxury. And lying at his door, now another interpretation of this would be lying at his gate. So he was living in a gated community. We can tell that he was rich. This man had a house and it was gated, and lying there was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores. So this poor man outside the gate was begging, He was covered with sores, which means he could have had leprosy. Maybe, maybe not, but he was afflicted with sores, and he would have eaten gladly of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. That goes back to thinking now back to the prodigal son, who would have gladly eaten of the pods of the pigs, the scraps that the pigs would have ate. So Lazarus was begging here, and dogs even used to come and lick his sores. He was being comforted by dogs. Now, that happens now these days. We get comforted by our dogs. But back then, dogs are unclean. They would not be someone that would come and comfort you. Rather, they would be ones that you'd try to actually to stay away from. But he is so afflicted that dogs would have come and, and, and comforted him, which is just something that would not have happened. So the Pharisees already would have seen there is this rich man, a really, really rich man. And oh my, he was rich. And then there was a poor man, and he was really, really poor tormented in a certain sense on this earth. Which is interesting because Lazarus's name, which is derived from Eleazar, means that God is my help. God is my help. He is poor and sick, but he has the dignity of the name that God is my help. Anyways, Lazarus dies and he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. What does this mean? It was to the side of Abraham. We have the same word used in John 13, with John being at the side of Jesus at the Last Supper. So Lazarus now is at the side of Abraham, kind of at this banquet in heaven. This rich man also died and was buried. Now he had the dignity of a burial. We do not hear that Lazarus even had a burial. And it says, and from the netherworld. Now that word can be interpreted into Hades, And that word can be interpreted into hell. So actually, so from hell, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. It's interesting. Now he sees Abraham. Now he sees Lazarus. But for how often did he pass him by without paying him any heed at all? So he cries out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. So he knows the name of Lazarus, and now he is treating him still as nothing. Father Abraham, have pity on me. Hey, go ahead and send Lazarus to do this for me. He does not address Lazarus. He does not treat him with dignity. He knows who he is, but he still does not treat him with the dignity that he deserves as his fellow neighbor. He still treats him as nothing at all. Anyways, Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Lazarus is receiving what is good. You are receiving what you deserve. Lazarus is receiving what he deserves, comfort. And you are receiving what you deserve, torment. How it's been switched now from good to bad, from bad to good for the two individuals. So Abraham goes on, Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. So this chasm is established which literally separates the two. There is nothing that they can do. You can't go from one side to the next. You can't go from hell to heaven. You can't go to heaven to hell. Now why would you want to do that anyways? Right? But you can't do this. 
And so the rich man says, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. Is he looking out for his brothers? No, not really. It's more of a prideful thing. Maybe an association, like, listen, now they're up there, my brothers are up there. They're in heaven, isn't that great? They can tell his buddies. But he's not actually caring for them. It's more of a prideful thing for himself. But Abraham says to them, whoa, 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 why would we have to do this? They have, Ab- they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. What does this mean? It means that they have the scriptures. Let them listen to them. The scriptures tell us what we are called to do. What the rich man is not doing because he is not loving his neighbor as himself. He does not love Lazarus as himself because he is caught up in his own wealth that he ignores those in need around him. So the rich man says, now remember that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, by the way. The rich man says, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. And we see this. We see this in two instances. First off, in John's Gospel, the account of Lazarus being raised from the dead. How he is sick and dead, and Jesus raises him up, and what happens? The Pharisees seek to put Lazarus and Jesus to death because he rose Lazarus from the dead. And then, of course, after Jesus' death and resurrection, the apostles go out and they're preaching the resurrection of Christ. And what are they doing? They're being persecuted by the Jewish leaders after preaching this message of the resurrection. So we see that the Pharisees are not going to listen. Their hearts have been hardened. Now the message Jesus had for the lovers of money was simple. Don't let money blind you to those in need. Use your gift of wealth to love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. This is what the rich man did not do. It was the sin of omission. We do not hear that he committed adultery or that he murdered. We don't hear that he did any of these things. And that is why he is in hell. No, it's because he is loving money and because he has this false God, you could say, and also because he is not loving his neighbor as himself. It's this great sin of omission. He's only caught up in his own self, his own wealth. He is being selfish instead of being selfless. And he's not loving his neighbor as himself. This is the great sin. We know the two great commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he is forgetting to do the one where it's loving your neighbor as yourself. Not forgetting, by the way. He's just choosing not to do it. Because every single day, he encounters Lazarus. Lazarus outside of his gate, begging for the scraps from the food from his table. And he continues to ignore him. Do we do this in our own life? Are we choosing our own good compared to the good of God? What do we choose in this life? What we choose in this life, we receive in the next, by the way. If we choose ourselves, we only get ourselves. And that is all this rich man has left. He only has himself left, and himself being in torment. If we choose to let God be our help, as Lazarus' name means, then we get him. If we choose God to be our help, then we get God. Who are we going to choose? Do not get caught up in your own wealth. Do not get caught up in this world. Instead, use the gifts that God has given us to help out others, to be generous with the poor, to seek out those in need, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And when we do this, then we know that we are choosing God. And with that, we are able to receive God eternally.